Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video we will talk about ovarian torsion. Ovarian torsion is a gynecological emergency in which the ovary twists around its supporting structures, resulting in compromised blood flow to the ovary. This can lead to severe pain and, if left untreated, can result in irreparable damage to the ovary. In this video we will talk about the risk factors, the pathophysiology, the symptoms, the diagnosis and treatment. What are risk factors for ovarian torsion? The presence of ovarian cysts, particularly larger cysts, increases the risk of ovarian torsion. Also, the presence of ovarian masses or tumors can increase the risk of torsion. They have in common that they basically bring the ovary out of balance, leading it to flip over. A history of previous ovarian torsion also increases the risk of reoccurrence. The risk of ovarian torsion may be slightly increased during pregnancy. Certain fertility treatments such as in vitro fertilization, can increase the risk of ovarian torsion. Fertility treatments can lead to an increase of the size of the ovaries and can predispose for the development of ovarian cysts. Ovarian torsion is more common in women of reproductive age, typically between the late teens and early 40s. What is the pathophysiology of ovarian torsion? Ovarian torsion occurs when the ovary rotates, leading to twisting of the ovarian blood vessels and compromised blood flow. The ovarian artery and vein are located within the suspensory ligament of the ovary, also known as the infundibulopelvic ligament. This ligament attaches the ovary to the lateral pelvic wall. It contains the ovarian vessels, lymphatic vessels, and nerves that supply the ovary. The suspensory ligament of the ovary extends from the ovary to the pelvic side wall, passing over the external iliac vessels. It provides support and allows for the movement and mobility of the ovary within the pelvic cavity. The lack of blood flow and oxygen to the ovary leads to tissue ischemia which means that the ovarian tissue doesn't receive an adequate supply of oxygen and nutrients. Ischemia can cause tissue damage and, if left untreated, can lead to necrosis, so cell death, of the affected ovarian tissue. If the blood supply remains compromised for an extended period, infarction may occur. Infarction refers to the death of tissue due to prolonged lack of blood supply. Infarction of the ovary can result in irreversible damage to the affected tissue. If the torsion is not promptly addressed, the lack of blood flow and subsequent tissue damage can lead to complications such as infection, abscess formation or the development of adhesions, so scar tissue, in the pelvic region. What are symptoms of ovarian torsion? The twisting of the ovary and its supporting structures in ovarian torsion causes compression and obstruction of the ovarian blood vessels, including the ovarian artery and vein. This leads to compromised blood flow to the ovary, resulting in tissue ischemia, so lack of oxygen and nutrients, and subsequent tissue damage. The ischemia and damage trigger pain signals from the affected tissues leading to the sensation of a severe, sharp pain. The twisting and compression of tissues in ovarian torsion can irritate and stretch the nerves in the ovary and surrounding structures. This nerve irritation contributes to the severe pain experienced by patients with ovarian torsion. The torsion of the ovary can cause it to become swollen and distended. The increased size of the ovary and the pressure exerted on surrounding tissues can also lead to localized discomfort and pain. The compromised blood flow and tissue damage in ovarian torsion can trigger an inflammatory response. This inflammation can irritate the peritoneum, 
so the lining of the abdominal cavity, leading to further pain and tenderness in the lower abdomen or pelvis. Some women may also experience changes in their menstrual cycle, such as irregular or absent periods. How can we diagnose ovarian torsion? We usually start by taking a detailed medical history, including symptoms, duration and any risk factors. Then we will perform a physical examination, which typically involves the palpation of the abdomen and pelvic region to assess for tenderness, presence of a mass or other signs suggestive of ovarian torsion. A transvaginal ultrasound is often the first imaging modality we use to evaluate ovarian torsion. It helps to visualize the ovaries, to identify any torsion-related changes, and to assess the blood flow to the ovaries. A Doppler ultrasound can help us to detect a reduced or absent blood flow to the affected ovary. In some cases, an MRI may be ordered if the diagnosis is uncertain or if additional information is needed. An MRI can provide detailed images of the ovaries and surrounding structures. Blood tests may be performed to assess markers of inflammation, infection and ovarian function. These can help to rule out other potential causes of symptoms. A pregnancy test is usually done to rule out an ectopic pregnancy, which can present with similar symptoms. In cases where the diagnosis is uncertain or the condition is severe, surgical exploration may be necessary for both diagnosis and treatment. This may involve laparoscopy or laparotomy, during which we can directly visualize the ovaries and determine if there is a torsion present. How can we treat ovarian torsion? The treatment of ovarian torsion typically involves surgical intervention to restore blood flow to the ovary and prevent further damage. The first step in surgical treatment is the detorsion, which involves untwisting the ovary and its supporting structures to restore blood flow. This can be done using minimally invasive techniques such as laparoscopy or through open abdominal surgery called laparotomy. During the procedure, we carefully untwist the ovary and assess its viability. In some cases after detorsion, we have to perform an ophoropexy, which involves attaching the ovary to a stable structure, such as the pelvic side wall, to prevent further episodes of torsion. Whenever possible, the goal is to preserve the affected ovary and its function. If the ovary appears viable and healthy after detorsion, no further action may be necessary beyond close monitoring and follow-up. In certain situations where the torsion has caused severe damage to the ovary or if the ovary is non-viable, removal of the affected ovary, called ophorectomy, may be necessary. This is more likely if the torsion has been present for a prolonged period or if there are other complicating factors. If one ovary has been affected by torsion, the contralateral ovary may also be examined and evaluated during surgery to ensure its health and viability. Depending on the findings, additional measures such as ophoropexy or close monitoring may be considered to protect the remaining ovary. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you again in the next video.